welcome to Intro Psych Sessions, the second season where I will rethink my entire Intro Psych course from beginning to end, asking friends and experts to help me figure out how to put it together in a way that implements recommendations and integrates the skills and knowledge that I want to give to my students. And who better to join me on this adventure, co-hosting the series with me, than Dr. Regan A.R. Guram. This is Intro Psych Sessions, Season 2, and I hope that these conversations will help you as you think about your students and your own intro course. Let's get to it. And now, a word from our sponsor. Endless distractions, overbooked schedules, information overload. Students face so many barriers to being fully engaged with their schoolwork. That's why Macmillan Learning's Achieve for Psychology gives you the tools you need to keep them focused on your course, before, during, and after class. Whether it's the exclusive author-created content, captivating footage in our introductory psychology video collection, or the self-evaluation of our goal-setting and reflection surveys, Achieve helps students stay focused on the course and makes it easy for them to tell you when they need extra help. See for yourself. Go to MacmillanLearning.com slash Psych Sessions 2023 special for an introductory tour today. Macmillan's Achieve for Psychology, engaging every student, supporting every instructor, setting the new standard for teaching and learning. Well, Regan, this is uh, episode uh, one. I think this is episode one, but thank you for uh, carving out some time in your schedule and uh, talking with me about intro psych because you and I have been talking about intro psych quite a lot for i don't know about five years is that yeah i was right? gonna say at least five years well yeah. and you've been doing a lot of thinking about intro psych even before that and so um has intro psych always been your bread and butter course or maybe it's not is it's is, is socially kind of your bread and butter no no intro health? psych intro psych is my bread and butter course yeah uh it, it surprises people to hear that i have never taught social psychology mm. uh yeah, I have taught a lot of intro psych and I've been reflecting on this recently because I think, you know, one of the things I hope we touch on in these conversations is, is how does class size influence what you do? Right. And, uh, and, and we'll, we'll hit that explicitly. But, uh, yeah, my bread and butter has been, uh, intro psych. I started doing two sections of 120, uh, every term. And for close to 10 years, I did two sections, a term, a semester for, uh, you know, every term, a semester. And then I moved the two sections of 120 to one section of 250 still every semester uh and did that for another 10 years <laughs> and uh then that corresponds to switching to Oregon State where uh you know I did one section a term uh but a much larger section and you know and went with that so lots of opportunities with all those years to play with variations and iterations and yeah. structure and design so really yeah. looking forward to it yeah. Well, well, you know, it's interesting because I'm going to be really selfish in this series, as you know, which is yep. I am uh, overhauling my intro psych course, which caps at 33 students. And, um, you know, you just you brought up one thing uh, already uh, regarding variation in this course, which is class size. But there are almost infinite variations in this course. There's not one way to teach it, but he, here's what I'm hoping that we can do is we can find the underlying kind of, uh, I don't know, foundations of what a good intro psych course is. I've done, I've got, um, I'm looking right now to my right and I'm looking at this big piece of paper that I have basically written my whole entire course content and and flow and design of my course onto. Um, so I've done some thinking about it, but I am I've run into these challenges. Um, you know, class size not being one of them. I actually there's some benefits of having a smaller class, but there are so many decision points in designing your intro psych course. And so uh 
I thought that it would be because you and I have had these conversations for five years. <laughs> I thought you would be a good partner. Uh, so just totally using you. I hope that's okay. But uh, you'd be a good partner for me to uh, to like co-host this series and to give feedback about you know what we think will work well and what we think may not work well in a small class. Of course, we'll talk about all the variations as well. But we get to talk to some of our friends who are kind of experts in a lot of different areas. Um, so yeah, I don't know what sticks out to you there. Yeah, you know that's 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 ex- that's what's exciting is you know who we're going to talk to and also the fact that uh, you've given it a lot of thought and I think you know one of the things that I know from knowing you and how you teach is is you are somebody who's uh, right off the bat as we sit here just the two of us you know uh, you do something that. I have a lot of trouble even imagining doing, which is interteaching, you know, yeah. and I'll just, I'll just throw that out there. And I, and when you teased me with this series, <laughs> I was really curious to know is interteaching staying or not, because uh, that, that makes a big difference, right. In how you structure things. So it, you know what, uh, Regan, I have to say uh, it's, it's not going to be pure interteaching anymore. It's um you know, one of the sneak, things sneak preview, sneak preview. I know. Well, <laughs> you know, but we're about to get on the uh, on yeah, the call with it. Sue later today, and so Sue might just slap me and put me in my place and say, "No, you've yeah. got to get back to interteaching." But I got to tell you, uh, the the interteaching model is, you know, it's helpful. It solves a lot of problems, but it's not a perfect model. And I don't know what the metaphor is, but when you're making these, dis- it's, everything is give and take in intro psych. You can't do it all. You can't have it all. You can't do it all meaningfully. And so if I double down on interteaching, that's what I do in the course, right? So at that point, um, there it's hard to make room and time for some other things that I might want to do. Now, um, one of the things that interteaching does really nicely is um, it sets your students up to come to class already prepared. Um, you're incentivizing them. It's very behavioral. Uh, you're incentivizing them to come to class having read, having maybe done some quizzes or whatever. But uh, it, it, publishers have gotten wise to that. They they have now created, you know, quizzes within yep. ebooks that yep. actually check that box. So do you use something like that with your students? A- absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I uh, I use uh, Lumen Learning, which is based on an OER, which I just love the fact that it's based on an OER because it keeps our costs down very, very low. And every student takes a pretest. You know, Uh, every student takes a pretest and I can see who's taken it and who's not. And I mean, I, you know, I love this because at least right now we are the two ends of the spectrum. I mean, you're teaching 33, I'm teaching 400, right? So in these conversations, I love the keeping both our class numbers in mind, but regardless, pre, pre, you know, pre exposure, right? Don't, I mean, one of the mantras is, that I always echo in my head is don't let class time be the first time your students have exposure to the material. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And yeah. what you're talking about, I think you're, you're talking about a really cool structure into teaching to make sure that that's more likely to be the case. So yeah. how else do we do that? You know, and what are the other mantras, right? Maybe, maybe that's getting at the, those underlying themes for intro that you alluded to a few minutes ago. Can we come up with those, those guiding principles that's almost like a toggle that you can tweak? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, there is. I really do think that there is a foundation. You know, I've been giving this, uh, well, part of this talk I've been given recently is really for the last year or so is really based on, um, instructors really finding out how to make their intro course, their course, because there's no, there's some recommendations out there, uh, but because there's no set way to do it. Your best way forward is to teach the course that only you can teach. That is the most engaging way to teach the course. It is going to resonate with students. It'll probably be more energizing. There's probably a little more intrinsic motivation. The challenge is that I, I think that most instructors, and I have thought this for the 20, almost 20 years I've been teaching, 
think that there is a right way to do this. Um, so yeah, so there's lots of, there's lots of options here. That's, and that's, what's exciting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now you and I, uh, we co-chaired the, uh, APA intro psych initiative. That's APA.org, uh, forward slash IPI. And it reminds me that in the last 10 years, 15 years, whatever, there has been tons of research done on not only intro psych and not and recommendations not only given on intro psych that weren't there before, but I feel like you also have kind of an eye into the or an ear into the literature for what is going on in general education. What do we know about how to create a more equitable course? How do we know about a, how to create a more engaging course? Um, how do we know how to um, create um, to 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 ensure? that we are doing practices that increase learning for our intro psych students and, and not just, you know, content coverage. So there are a lot of uh, things to consider that even five, 10 years ago, we didn't have, um, we didn't, we didn't have our, at our disposal. And so, um, you know, it's, it seems timely for me to tear apart my course Think about all these things that have been done over the last decade, including intro psych recommendations. Um, yeah, it's what are the things that stick out to you kind of in the research and what we know about just teaching and des- designing courses that are effective? What sticks out to you, especially in your position as a, a learning center uh, director? Right. You know, and and immediately, I think I think about if you were to say, as you sort of are, I guess you are. So you it's not even a hypothetical. You are saying what's sticking out. I'll tell you what's sticking out. You know, I think about um, I think about Tracy Addy's book, uh, What Inclusive Instructors Do. I think about the Hogan and Sathy inclusive teaching. And you can see the common word there, inclusivity. Right. Mm -hmm. And and what strikes me about uh, both of those books that have gotten buzz is there's a much better focus on how can we be inclusive, right? Yep. And and I think uh, many may be surprised to read those two books, and I've read both, and many may be surprised to, to realize that so much of those suggestions are good pedagogical practice, number one. Right. And part of that pedagogical practice is there are some counterintuitive deals in there. And I'll give you my biggest counterintuitive deal. Something that the books talk about is really the importance of structure. And I think I want to bring that up because especially in intro psych, uh, having looking at the structure that you have. And of course, interteaching is a lot of structure, right? I mean, yeah. gosh, that's structure. Yeah. And likewise, I have a lot of structure in my course and I can, you know, here, uh, time for the time machine. I can take you back to my very first semester, my very first semester after I taught intro psych for the very first time, my student evaluations were filled with the following variation on the theme of this course is so much busy work. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, and I reflected on that and I thought the problem is not the busy work is the problem that I didn't do a good job of explaining why they have to do it. So I made a very simple change and I just, the very next term revised my syllabus to make it very clear why students were doing all those different things. And Garth, the, the, the comments went down to zero. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. So I think structure, that's the big thing I'm seeing right now is support for structure. Give students structure and a structured course actually benefits all students. OK, so here's an equity thing that I picked up along the way um, and or a principle, I think, to what you're saying. And that is structure. So so I teach at a community college. OK, my job is to develop these young adults into scholars right into uh to teach them some skills that will often they are underprepared um students for college um and and so one of my jobs in the course i've really come to like hold this very very um in high regard is that i am going to develop them i am not trying to get 
perfect scholars of Psych 100. And to me, this speaks to structure. How am I going to structure scaffold things? And here's the equity piece for the the least prepared students for intro psych. Um, and that was so maybe you can just help me analyze that. Um, you know, I'm sure there's many views on how to get equitable or create an equitable course design or, or you know, um, yeah, just to make it more equitable. But here, th this is the one thing that I am kind of hanging on to right now is when I think about designing my course, I am designing it for the least prepared college student. What do you think about that? Push yeah. back if you want. Well, so here's the so I, I oh absolutely I will right because here I think what we what we have what what makes this so challenging is by by aiming where you aim. What about the folks at the other end of the spectrum, right? Yep. I mean, is there something there because in e in either of our classes or any of our classes to with anybody we talk with, there's a spectrum. Right. There's a spectrum. And I think um, I know that focusing where you're focusing takes a lot of energy and it's energy well spent and well used. I also try and think about, well, OK, what's that going to do to those other individuals? Right. Who mm -hmm. are maybe in the center or yeah. even more so on the upper end. Yep. Right. And I think I think the answer, or the partial answer is uh, is structuring the course so that there there's these optional kind of things. But there is a baseline for everybody such that just like in a game. Right. And of course, we've, we've talked we've talk, talked about gamification in the past. Um, just like in a game, uh, your course is gamified in a way where if you don't, if you if you've already got certain skills, you can level up, right? Yeah. But yep. but that's that's what I try and think about is where where do we do that leveling up? Yeah. You know how do we afford? What, what's the affordances for that leveling up? You know, it's a, when I hear that, I think about, and of course, we're limited by what we've read and what we've seen, and so I haven't right. seen it all and heard it all, but. Uh, this is where I think when it comes to assessment and actually building these assignments, spec grading is going to be kind of an interesting, I will borrow from it. I probably won't go full spec grading, but where where um, the specifications for assignments uh, are like a minimum threshold. Here's if, if folks don't know what spec grading is, um, I'm not going to give the whole explanation, but here's one little part of it is either students reach the outcome or pass the assignment or they don't. OK, and in in my course, what I'm thinking now is uh, students can. I mean, even if they don't pass it the first time, they can pass it a second time. They can try again to pass and 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 reach that outcome. But that means that there's also leveling. There's a basic standard uh, and then right. there is a higher achieving standard. Um, but you're hitting that basic level. I think that's what you're saying, maybe. What do you think? Absolutely. And, okay. and I think and I think right there, I think you've nailed it is, you know, us all asking ourselves, what's that? What what are the what's the basic level we want to get everybody to? And then what's, you know, the advanced level? And, you know, that's the most even those two levels of accomplishment are, you know, a start. But of course, you can have more. But really, I think and it's it's got to be you know a variety of assignments, too. Right. Yeah. I mean, are I, I still give some multiple choice exams, but the portion of the grade from the multiple choice exam is is has dropped over the years I've been doing it. That's probably one of the biggest changes to my course is, uh, you know, how much you get from just multiple choices dropping and I'm adding writing and exactly like you, Garth, I think it's the mastery and developmental writing that's the key. So I, I think that's a great theme for us to sort of keep in mind is what are those basics that we want to make sure everybody gets to. And I think the word that we haven't used, but we've tiptoed around is what are those basic skills, right? And I yeah. think, I think, uh, Steve Chu and the, the skills group, Karen and folks did such a great job of talking about let's, let's spend some more time in intro psych talking about skills. Yeah. And we're going to try to tag some of those folks to talk about skills, um, for this series. Um, now we're wrapping up, but I want to just, uh, I, I want to, 
kind of summarize what we've talked about. I think we've said that structure is very important to equity. Um, that, um, and and I'm going to say this as well that I've put every week in my course, and we're on you and I are on quarters, which is another variation, right? But uh, I have this this cycle, a weekly cycle that students. Um, you know, get used to by week three, they know kind of what's expected of them in the cycle. So uh, I think that's helpful for them. I'm going to keep that in the course. Um, you know, I am challenged right now about your variety of the, when you're talking about variety of assignments, I know this is different than what you're saying, but, uh, I, in that cycle, I think I keep things so rigid in that cycle, as far as what's expected at the end of the each week that, it could actually get boring for students. And so um, I'm challenged by that. But I think that, um, you know, the one thing that we didn't get to, Regan, and I'm sure it'll come up, but I want to talk a little bit about syllabus because I know you've done some work on that. And I want to talk about engaging students with syllabi because I know it's not through a bunch of text. <laughs> and so I want to think through that portion of my course too. Um, how did I how did I summarize? Was that was that all right for you? Is that what you heard? Today? I think I, I think those are some great, you know, some great levels. The thing I just think to want to throw in there because, you know, you said this very explicitly and I don't want to lose it is uh, who are we aiming the class for? Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think. I think you said that so nicely about where there was that very conscious, I'm really aiming it at the folks who don't have the skills. What are the what are the pros and cons and implications of that? Yep. Yeah. And let's emphasize skills. We're going to talk about skills. We're going to talk about content for sure, because every instructor of intro psych is faced with this uh, problem to solve. And uh, in fact, we've got We've got Sue Franz coming up at some point and David Myers, and I'm sure they're going to have opinions about it. So, uh, Regan, thanks for sitting down for episode one. 